We respect and honour all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first educators and the first creatives. And we commit to building a brighter future together. Hi folks, it's Rob the Robot here from the Adobe Education Team. Welcome to a Student Creativity Challenge from Adobe. If you haven't already, please access Adobe Express on a browser via express.adobe.com and log in via your school email to get full premium access. Here's your teachers for this session, Dr. Tim Kitchen and Abby Nelson. Thanks, Rob, and welcome to this Student Creativity Challenge focused on making powerful video stories with Adobe Express. Hi, Abby. Hi, Tim, and welcome to everybody watching this Student Creativity Challenge. We have over 660 students from 16 different schools registered for this session and hundreds more who will be watching later on demand. Note that there is nothing to download to get started. Absolutely. All you need to do is open up your favorite browser and type adobe.com slash express in the address bar and sign in via the continue with email button. Make sure you're using your school account in order to get access to the full premium version with all the images and template assets. You may have noticed that uh, we now have a new reimagined version of Adobe Express for you to enjoy. The new version features a brand new all-in-one multimedia editor that we will be soon working with, plus lots more. Those of you working with iPads and other tablet devices, note that there will be an update to the Adobe Express app coming soon. But to make the most of this particular session, you may prefer to use the browser version through Safari on the iPad or through Chrome on the Android tablet. Abby, can you please remind everyone how to actually log into Adobe Express? Absolutely. Let me just share my screen to show you how to do that. Great. So to log into Express, what you need to do is you need to select continue with email. So select continue with email to log in. What you'll do then is put in your school email address. So student or teacher, put in your school email address to get access to all those premium assets. Once you've done that, you'll be able to select continue and then you'll select school account, not personal account. Make sure you're selecting school and it will take you through. Sometimes you'll have some extra security options like I do, but maybe yours will go straight through. Either way, it'll take you to the Express dashboard and you're all logged in. Excellent. There it is. What do you want to make? That's what we want to see. Thanks, Abby. Note that if we are going too fast, because this is being streamed, you can pause and play at any time. The theme for this session is video literacy and making powerful video stories with Adobe Express. Here is a clip from Dr. Tim providing some of the interesting history on video as a literacy. Video literacy is the art of communicating through moving images. Its history goes back to the 1890s during the silent film era that fascinated audiences for decades with the concept of going to a theatre to be informed and entertained by stories through images that move. The cinema began to move into people's homes in the late 1920s with the invention of the television. But it wasn't until 1956 when the first TV show was broadcast in Australia just in time for the Olympic Games in Melbourne. Making stories for film and TV back then involved expensive film cameras and splicing equipment that literally cut lengths of film not required and spliced important sections of film together with a form of glue or tape. In the 1960s, filmmaking enthusiasts were using battery operated 8mm film cameras with film cassettes that could be sent away to be processed into film reels. They could be projected using projectors like this. Editing still involved cutting and splicing and in the early 1970s a magnetic strip could be added to allow for audio recording and syncing with the filming. In the mid-1970s, the VHS, which stands for Video Home System, was invented by the Japanese. And in the US, Sony invented the Betamax system. I remember households and schools debating which format they should use. VHS ended up winning that format war, and the old Super 8 domestic film camera was replaced by the VHS camera and recording system. 
During the 1970s and 80s, film and TV companies gradually moved from film-based cutting and splicing to what is called non-linear editing, where footage from the camera is captured onto a computer system for editing. This process became possible for domestic and school use when technology like firewire cables allowed cameras to easily be connected to computers to capture footage and audio in real time. It was a time-consuming process that required computers with lots of processing power and storage, which were not common in schools back then. In 1999, Apple released the first version of iMovie and made it a standard application with the Mac operating system. And almost overnight, digital video editing became commonplace in schools and in homes around the globe. In 2005, YouTube was set up as a video sharing platform and was soon acquired by Google. Within a year, more than 25 million videos were being uploaded to YouTube each day. In 2023, YouTube has over 2.7 billion monthly users with over 80 million subscribers. These days, more than a quarter of the world's population uses YouTube every month to be entertained and informed. As a global population, on average each day we consume 1 billion hours of video content on YouTube and over 500 hours of footage is uploaded. Thanks to YouTube, video is now considered a literacy. In 2007, Apple launched the iPhone and the smartphone revolution began. It wasn't long before just about everyone had a digital video camera in their pocket. Along with the smartphone came a range of video editing applications like Adobe Premiere Rush, allowing more ways for everyone to enhance their video literacy skills. In the early 2010s, the big camera makers like Sony and Panasonic started replacing tape-based cameras with cameras that stored data on digital memory cards, allowing not only for higher resolution recordings, but also faster and more reliable transfer of video data from the camera to the computer for editing. Serious video editors were using digital video editing software like Apple's Final Cut Pro until they changed the look and feel of the application in 2011 and many moved to Adobe Premiere Pro, which was not recognized as industry standard back then, but now has become the tool of choice for filmmakers, television networks, and video producers around the globe. And what's really amazing is that the Adobe Premiere Pro that's used by the big filmmakers like Marvel Studios is the same as what schools have to access. For the average teacher and student out there who is not really interested in a high-end professional video editing application like Premiere Pro, the good news is that there is Adobe Premiere Rush, which is part of the Adobe Creative Cloud suite of applications, a cut-down version of Premiere Pro. And there is the very simple to use Adobe Express, which can produce amazing results. And all Adobe Express requires is internet access and a browser. And best of all, it's free of charge for any K-12 school around the globe. Video literacy has come a long way from silent films to the digital age and into the palm of our hands. Today, it's a powerful tool for expression, for education and for entertainment. It continues to evolve, shaping how we communicate and understand the world. Video is now recognized as a form of literacy and thanks to Adobe Express, it's a tool that anyone can use to enhance communication and creativity in any subject area and any workplace. Okay, Abby, let's say I want to build a short video to wish someone a happy birthday. How would I go about starting? Absolutely. Let's get back into Adobe Express. To get started making a happy birthday video, what we'll need to do is, like we did before, log into Adobe Express. Once we're here, we can see across the top, there are lots of options of things we can start creating. Mine might look a little bit different to yours because I'm not a student or a teacher in a school, but what you'll need to do is scroll across the top and look for video. Once you've found video, you can select browse templates. If you can't find it here, another option is you can go to the purple cross on the left side of the screen and you can look for video in that part of the dashboard. So lots of options of where to access. 
but select video. I'm going to select from here and I'm going to select browse templates. So Tim, you said we're going to make a happy birthday video. Sometimes hard to find some inspiration. The good news is with templates and just typing in now, I can find a template that I'd like to start working with. I don't have to think from scratch. I can start with a template and start making my video uh, straight away. So as you can see, what I did is I typed into templates on the left side of the screen, happy birthday, and I've got quite a few different options that have come up. Of course, you could make one from scratch, but I'm gonna be using a template today. Once you're here, all you need to do is pick an option. And I think I'm going to go with this one here because I like that it's got photos, text, colors, everything that we're looking at today. So here is the template. This one is for happy birthday, Estelle. And let's just have a look at what the template looks like before we start changing things. So I'm gonna press play. Cool. Good template, I reckon. What we do need to look at now is how can we start changing this to make this, um, you know, relevant to the person we're sending it to or to ourselves or whoever it may be. The first thing we can look at to making things relevant and changing things around is, of course, the text. So you'll see the text in the template. Simply by clicking on it, I can start changing things around. I can also, on my left here, start, you know, changing the 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 way it is on the screen, I can change the color, I can change the outline, I can change how thick or thin the outline is, I can play around with a lot of different options here. But let's just start with, you know, changing the actual text itself, because I'm not sure who Estelle is. So maybe I'll address it to Tim. I'll address it to you, Tim, huh? Happy birthday, Dr. Tim, 21 years old today, right? Absolutely. That's exactly how old I am today. Wonderful. So as I said before, Tim, once I've written in um, that new text, I can start changing around the font as well. So I can look in here and I can look for the kind of font I'd like to change it to. But I can also use some of those recommended fonts that come up. So have a look and see what works for you in your design. You can, of course, change the layout of the font as well. Things like arches. And you could do it the other way around in a bow, or you could even go dynamic and it can sort of make some more dynamic um, additions to how your text is on the page. Hey, I'm Abby, like I'm loving the new circle effect. Can you click the circle effect for me next oh, to the arch? Oh, yours, the one I missed. A, oh, yes. It's a brand <laughs> new one. It's so cool. I mean, it's not necessarily cool for what you're doing right now, but it's just a really lovely effect to play with. There yeah, that's cool. Look at that. I mean, it's a little it's bit hard to working. see. <laughs> and I could sort of do it like this and stretch it out. I don't so know if you'd fun. know who it was for, though, first looking at That's it, right? Yeah. It's super cool, right. super cool. I'll, I'll go you. away. You keep going. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, Tim. It's all good. So we've changed our text, and we all know we can do that now. Of course, you can select, and you can simply press delete if you wanted to get rid of something, but I don't really want to do that today because this is um, a happy birthday template I'm happy to work with. You can change the text. You can also change images. So you can see this image here. This is actually a moving image that's been added to the template. You can delete it and you can add in your own because I don't really know who that person is. And what I can do is I can go to media on the left side of the screen to be adding in images. And I can choose from the thousands, if not millions of options of images here or I can upload images from my device. And you know what, I might do that now because this is a little bit funny, but I actually have a picture of Tim in here, I think, from some other work that I've done with Tim. I hope it's a good one, Abby. I hope it's a there really it good one. You've got my best. Oh, that's that's pretty good. It's got the thumbs up. I like <laughs> and it. And the good thing is, is with this one, Tim, we can also show everyone a really exciting new feature that is in Adobe Express when it comes to adding images. So I've got my photo of Tim here, but you can see it's got this white background and it's not very aesthetic to what I'm trying to do. Simply by selecting on the photo, the image, I can now go to my quick actions and I can select remove background. And let's just see what it does. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, that's that amazing. Quick. It's gosh, taken out so the background. Good. And so Tim, you would know because you're a Photoshop pro, this would take... I don't know, I can't say an exact amount of time, but it would take quite a lot of time to get that pencil and remove all of the background in a different tool. But now with remove background, you know, it's just so quick, right? Well, the, I guess the advantage is we don't actually have to go into Photoshop to do it. There are ways of doing that in Photoshop really quickly, just with a couple of clicks now. But 
the point is we don't have to. We can actually do it all within Adobe Express, which is so cool. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's great. We've added in our image. And of course, if you have different images you'd like to remove the background from, you can do that too. So feel free to be playing along while we're doing this. Um, and yeah, use it in everyday life, if not even just to make a happy birthday template. But back on track. I'm getting off track. I'm getting off track. What else can we do to make this template really, really exciting? We can start thinking about the background, which we can change really easily by just selecting it. You can see this background has a gray textured background, but it also has some shapes embedded in it. So we've got this pink shape here, we've got a blue one, and then we've also got an orange one. Just like anything in Express, you can select that shape and you can select delete to get rid of it, but you can also change things or you can you know, flip them around and make different adjustments to them. Awesome. So there's lots of things we can do. Like I showed before, you can remove shapes, but you can also add in different shapes. Everything that you can add and you can change are available to you on the left side of the screen. So if you're ever lost, just go there and see what else is that you can add in. You can see there are lots of different design assets you can add to your design. And yeah, you can go crazy with as little or as much. And here is where you can start playing with layers as well. So I've selected this image. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And I would like for it to go behind all of the text behind Tim, because as you can see, I can't really see him at the moment. That all I need to do is I need to do a right click and then select send to back. Oh, I actually didn't want to send it back. I wanted to send it backwards because I don't want it to go at the very, very back. I just want it to go backwards behind the text. We might have to play with the layers a little bit here by just bringing things up so that things can sit exactly where you want them to sit. And then we can see it all. So what we need to do is we just need to find where we want our layer to sit so that everything can be visible, just like that. So that looks great. I'm really happy. I like the colors. I've got a photo of Tim. Um, I just need to do one more thing. And I think it might involve a little bit of audio. Because of course, if you're sending someone a birthday card or really any multimedia uh, video, you want it to have some sound. So let's think about that now. If we go to media on the left side of the screen, we can see there, there are a few options available to us. So we do have photos, which we've had a look at. We have videos. So you could add in a moving video into your multimedia um, piece of work, but you can also add in audio. Here you have lots of options of different stock songs, music that you can add in and you can just use these as much as you'd like because you can use all this stock, um, all these stock assets. But what you can also do is you can record a voiceover. You can, of course, upload some music or, you know, a creation you've already made. But what we're going to do now is we're going to record a voiceover. So to do that, what I need to do is select record voiceover. See that my mic is connected and you might need to change this around depending, but yep, all good. My mic is connected. I can see it's registering and then we can start the recording. Happy birthday, Tim. I hope it's an amazing day. I'm so excited for you to be 21 years old. Just that easy. So cool. Let's have a look. Take the playhead back to the start there, Abby. Let's have a Let's have a listen to it and a look at it. Happy birthday, Tim. I hope it's an amazing day. I'm so excited for you to be 21 years old. Abby, that's so amazing. Can you do one more thing for me? Can you go back yes. to media again, back to your media yes. button on the left, and do a search for audio, do a search for happy birthday. I don't know. I haven't tried this. This is just oh, a little experiment to true. see. All right, let's if there's have a look. any music that relates to happy birthday. Oh, play play that first one. What's that first one? Nice. Pretty that works. good. Right. Oh, very cool. So now we have two bits of audio. And something to think about here when you're using this is, you know, what are the levels of the sound, right? So I've recorded myself talking to Tim, and now we've got this amazing song. So what everyone will need to do is you will need to have a look at the volume of these different audios and make sure one's not competing with the other too much. So for me, I think I'd like the music to be softer than my voice. So what I've done is I've just selected that piece of audio and I can turn it down. So I think let's start with 15% and give it a go and see how it sounds. Happy birthday, Tim. I hope it's an amazing day. I'm so excited for you to be 21 years old. 
pretty nice. cool. Nice. Hey, look, this, you're going so well. I'm going to I'm going to get one more thing for you to do because I just <laughs> want to check this out. <laughs> Go back to your media tool. Yeah. I'd be really interested to know. Take the playhead back to the start of the story. Yeah. Is that that show layer timing button right down the bottom? If you keep it on, it means you can have full control over when different things are going to come in. Now, do a search for me under videos in the video tab, so away from audio. Do a search for balloons. Let's see if we've got oh, some cool. really cool balloons for my birthday video. <laughs> very lucky. Oh, lots of balloons. Very, very nice. good. Let's go this yeah. one, I think. Yeah, that one's good. So now that we've added that video in that yeah that little video can you move it to the top or to the bottom right hand corner but i don't want it to come in at the start i want it to come in about halfway through the the message so how are we going to do that so what you do like you said before make sure show layer timing is on then you select the video or that whatever part you want to change and you just drag it to where you want it to sit in nice. the um, in the project do you know, Abby, I'd like it to actually animate in. I want it to maybe nice. bungee in from the top. So it's bungeeing down from the top. How are we going to do that? So to do that, what you need to do is you need to select the video. You need to scroll down on the left-hand side. Everything's always on the left. And you see we can add in animations here. So this nice. is where you can pick how it animates into the screen. What did you say, Tim? How did you envision it coming yeah, in? Yeah, let's, let's bungee. So click the in option and see if there's a nice. bungee. Oh, there is, right, oh, the top left. That's so Beautiful. cool. Very, very and, good. And you can see here you can change the duration. Nice. And how and many even bounces. The direction. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Very well, let's have cool. it bungee from the, from the bottom up, I think might be better. So have it the very first arrow yeah, going nice. up upwards. Can you click cool. that arrow Done. going up there, Abby? Oh, good. Yeah. Fantastic. Now take the playhead back to the start of the story and let's have a preview. Happy birthday, Tim. I hope it's an amazing day. I'm so excited for you to be 21 years old. Very good. <laughs> very, very exciting. And hey, like, Abby. Everyone sees that this, like, Abby. this is so exciting versus just a flat poster that we looked at in May. So many things you can do. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do this, Abby, but if you take the playhead back to where the balloons are and just select the balloons. Yeah. We could remove the background. Yeah. Is that perhaps what you were thinking? Yeah, you can. So even though it's a video, we showed you how to remove the background of a still image. Notice there is a remove background for video now as well. And if we click on it, what's it say? This video doesn't have a well-defined. So, okay, so it's going to be difficult to do because there's so many different balloons there. But if it was just you talking, for instance, and you wanted to remove your background, instead of having to do that whole filming on a green screen and chroma keying out with Premiere Pro, you can actually do that with Adobe Express now by clicking Absolutely. that remove background. It takes a little bit of time. There's a bit of processing that's required. But, oh, boy, it does a great job. So, that yeah, the balloons that weren't such a good thing. Abby, that's terrific. Look, um, let's say we've actually completed our video story. How do we make it into an actual video file that we can share with other people? Absolutely. So once we're done and we're happy with our project, what we can do is we can go up to uh, share on the top of my screen. And what you can do is you can do a few things. So you could invite collaborators to join you on your project and tim do you mind i'm going to add you as a collaborator if i can and you can um come in and show everyone how to download it because my mouse is having some trouble today no worries so absolutely this is so cool because it means it's real-time collaboration and so i'm going to start getting my screen ready so abby you've now just invited me i'm going to start sharing my screen now so i'll take over the sharing for a moment so people can see what it's going to look like. And I'm going to share this screen. So now we're in my screen, not Abby's anymore. So I'm back to the start. And um, I would have got a notification. I would have even got an email, I think, as well, to say that we could share something. Uh, there's a little notification button at the top right-hand corner. And if I click on that, we can see Abby has invited me to a particular project just now. So if I click on that and it should start to come up 
and I'll see exactly what Abby's been working on. There it is, even though it's Yay. on my screen, which is so cool. And as I'm moving around uh, my cursor, Abby's probably seeing my cursor move around. Abby, can you move your cursor around yours? Because we, we might be able to see your cursor floating around. Just There it is. I can see Abby. I can, I can see Very that she's cool. doing and this. I can see you too. So cool. We can have multiple people all at the same time, which is really cool. So what Abby was about to share with you was how to how to share it. Now, because we're not logged into a K-12 account, we haven't got Google Classrooms or Microsoft Teams. We've got other ways of sharing. But if you're going to share, you should be able to see your Google Classrooms or your Microsoft Teams account to, to share with, which is probably the recommended way of sharing through the cloud. Otherwise, you can just click the download button. By clicking download, we can save this as an MP4 video file. So it becomes a physical file, not through the cloud, but a physical video file that then you can actually go and put into a PowerPoint presentation or remix with another video editing tool or just share as a video file. So many options. We can make the resolution a little bit smaller. Abby, that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing all of that. Um, Abby, just to remind us, if if we wanted some more help, there's actually some tutorials that we've got. So I'll just stop sharing my screen for the moment. If you'd like some more tutorials that relate to the new reimagined Adobe Express, look up adobe.ly slash new dash express dash APAC. Yes, thank you, Tim. And here is an intro clip for this playlist of tutorials. Adobe Express has been totally reimagined. Adobe Express for K-12 schools is amazing. Lots of great new templates for posters, slide presentations and infographics specifically set up for students and teachers. Real-time collaboration is a feature. There are new ways of linking Photoshop and Illustrator to Adobe Express. And for Chromebook users, the new Adobe Express is a more seamless and accessible experience. But what I'm most excited about is the new Animate from Audio Quick Action and the new all-in-one multimedia editor that allows students to create virtually anything that comes to their imagination. Well, that's it for the 2023 set of student creativity challenges. Our first 2023 challenge was back in May with the topic of make a poster with Adobe Express about building your future. In May, the challenge was to turn your poster into a video story. In August, we did a challenge on making digital portfolios. And then in September, the challenge was focused on making infographics. You can look up the challenges via adobe.ly slash student dash challenges dash ANZ. Adobe Express is just getting better and better in terms of functionality and features. So keep working with it. In fact, each time you get an assignment or a project to do in really any subject area, see if you can use Adobe Express to make it really creative, engaging and fun. That's right, folks. Even the most boring and tedious assignment can potentially be turned into a fun multimedia project with the help of Adobe Express. Abby, thank you so much for co-hosting with me this year. Oh, thank you, Tim. It's been a pleasure and thanks to you too. Thanks, folks. And don't forget to... Keep being creative. Well, we do hope you've enjoyed this student creativity challenge from Adobe. If we don't see you again at another challenge, we do encourage you to keep using Adobe Express and other Adobe software whenever you're creating a digital presentation for school, for your family, for friends, or just for fun. The more you use the tools, the better you'll get. Bye for now, and don't forget to Keep being creative.